And we are back right here at Mobile World Congress Barcelona. Welcome to the AWS studio. I'm joined alongside experts from AWS and Accenture as we ask ourselves one of the most important questions of 2025. And that, of course, is with the advent of generative AI, do we finally have that silver bullet for mainframe modernization? Rob Namrata, welcome to the studio. Morning. Good morning, and thanks for having us, Robbie. Let's start with a round of intros. Over to you, Rob. Uh, uh, Rob Pinkham, I'm a Senior Managing Director at Accenture, responsible for our overall systems integration business. A big part of that is mainframe. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. And over to you, Namrata. And Robbie, I lead mainframe modernization worldwide partner go-to-market at Amazon Web Services. So let's start with you, Namrata. Tell us about how the mainframe modern, uh, modernization landscape is rapidly changing. So yeah, we've seen a, a big shift over the last three years since AWS started investing in mainframe modernization. Uh, till about two, three years ago, our customers were looking at mainframe modernization from a purely tactical perspective, a few applications at a time. However, what we are seeing right now is that the customers want to reimagine their entire mainframe infrastructure, their entire mainframe landscape. And this is why what you mentioned, the silver bullet, Gen AI is the best thing that's happened and will really enable them to achieve their overall business objectives. So as you think about reimagining the journey, I assume you're talking about assessment, planning, and execution, and we'll dive into each of those phases. But curious, Rob, from your perspective, how's the strategy change in 2025, if at all? You know, um, clients actually believe they can do it now. You know, that, that's, what's, uh, that's what's changing in the marketplace. And so for 2025, as Namrata said, um, they want to solve, clients are looking to solve the whole problem. They used to think, I, I want, I'm going to solve this piece or this piece. They want to solve the whole problem, and it's our challenge to help them solve the whole problem. And what that means is uh, there are going to be pieces of the estate that they do reimagine, things that where they want to start from scratch, and there are going to be some things that they just want for cost reasons to get off the mainframe. And it's our job, it's our responsibility to help them see the vision for the entire solution. And of course, we're a firm believer that that better together story is best enabled through partners. So let's zoom out for a second and talk about the origin story. Always love a good origin story. Surely the two of you have been working together for years, right? Well, Rob and I have been working together for... 10 weeks, maybe? 10 weeks. Uh, <laughs> but Accenture and AWS has been, have been working together for a few years. In fact, uh, Accenture was one of our launch partners when we launched the mainframe modernization competency back in 2021. Uh, and it's been a great journey. We have doubled our partnership every year since then. Uh, we have partnered for industries like financial services, insurance, automotive, healthcare, life sciences, and now telcos. Uh, we have uh, launched Go Big programs around refactoring solutions. Uh, so it's been a great partnership over the last few years, and I look forward to scaling it together this year, not only in Telco, uh, but the other regions that we've identified as part of our joint planning this year. Clients want a solution that we bring to them together. I mean, in the end, uh, there are services, there's the platform services, they want us to come together and, and, and it's part of solving the whole problem. It's a partnership that matters and the partnership actually becomes a triangle. It's, uh, it's AWS, Accenture and the client because we all have to invest, we all have to make sure that we're doing the right things ultimately for the program and, uh, and so partnership's the way to go. So let's unpack that triangle then, talking about each of the requisite components that really deliver value to clients. And maybe, Namrata, let's start with you as we think about Amazon Q Developer Transform for mainframe, I mean, built on 17 years of AWS cloud experience. 17 years of AWS cloud and customer experience and partner experience. And uh, I'm sure Rob will agree with me that every time we talked about mainframe modernization to our clients, uh, yes, we spoke about costs, we spoke about risks, uh, we spoke about business outcomes, but a lot of times our decision makers would stop short of finally making that decision on embarking on this mainframe modernization journey because of the time it took. Mainframe modernization, we're talking about millions of lines of code, would take years. Uh, and at that point, uh, something would happen and they would stop short. Gen AI is that game changer that helps our customers make that decisions because it reduces the timelines, reduces it from years to months, months to weeks, 
weeks to hours. Uh, in fact, recently my team did a POC for one of our joint customers uh, where we assessed about 400,000 lines of code in two hours. That's the kind of dramatic shift that is really driving a big change in 2025. And of course, Accenture is our key partner in driving that to market. Uh, Gen AI is all about confidence. So what Namrat is talking about is clients didn't have confidence that, that, that they could actually do mainframe modernization. So Gen AI provides us transparency into code. It gives us the ability to do things that they haven't been able to do in the past. So for example, test cases. Right. Most of our clients don't have great test cases. So that when we do a modernization, we're actually building those from scratch. Gen AI helps us do that. It helps us in the assessment, understand the code. It's all about giving us confidence that we can execute it. And, and the proofs of concepts that we can now do together rapidly another level of confidence for right. our clients. And so we get that confidence rolling and clients want to move. I've got to believe the sequencing matters here. You've got to get the assessment phase right. So my question back to you, Rob, is like, what, what are the common set of success criteria that client, uh, client after client is always asking? And what do you need to see from each of those components of the triangle that you mentioned? Yeah. So um, clients are challenged to make the decision on what modernization type they uh, they use for each application within the mainframe. And so th that kind of decision making is hard because some of them they really truly want to reimagine. They want to develop from scratch, especially the functionality that truly runs the business. And then there's functionality that supports the business where we may not want to modernize that or need to modernize that as completely. And so it's those decisions that are hard for our clients and helping them navigate that in the assessment is what we need need to do, help our clients make good decisions. It's basic 101. <clears throat> it's just um, more straightforward now because of Gen AI. And can you share a little bit more as you think about the tools in the toolkit, um, the, the work you currently do with your clients with Code Genie? Yeah, so, uh, so Code Genie is really about, I mean, that's our tool for automation and, and, uh, and Gen AI. So what we do is we work to, clients want us to bring our tools together so uh, it's our responsibility up front to integrate AWS tools with our tools so that what we're bringing the client is one seamless story about tooling. They don't want to put one tool in for AWS and one tool in for Accenture. They want a tool for their modernization. So Code Genie is all about um, automation and Gen AI, but working with, uh, with the um, AWS tool sets. So as we think about each of those components of the triangle, can you tell us a little bit more about Amazon Q Transform for Mainframe? Yes, absolutely. Q Transform for Mainframe was launched by uh, Matt Garman during reInvent 2024, and we're expecting general availability in Q2 of 2025. Uh, but during this time, we've been working with our customers, with our partners like Accenture to run POCs, do lots of trainings, uh, integrate some of our partner solutions like Code Genie as part of Q Transform for Mainframe, as part of our extensibility strategy. So I want to take a minute and really talk about QTM, as we call it, right? So there are five different pillars on which this uh, Amazon Q for Mainframe Transform is built. Uh, you've got Assess, uh, you've got Documentation, Code Decomposition, Sequencing, and finally, refactoring. And the best part about QTM is that you don't have to use all five features. You can pick the ones that meet your business objectives the most. Um, and this is where, as part of the, the assess phase, like I said, we're able to reduce uh, POCs to a few hours, to a few days. Uh, one of the big uh, uh, it challenges our customers talk about is the lack of documentation because mainframes uh, and especially the applications you probably agree with me Rob Absolutely. is like a spider web you know they're uh, interdependent with x86 applications they've grown in ways without documentation and Q helps our customers see the documentation because it generates it. Then comes the code decomposition, right? Our customers are able to see the code split into batches of functional domains. And then 
it helps with the recommendation around sequencing as to which set of applications you should start modernizing uh, as you embark on this modernization journey uh, with some uh, human in the loop. And that's where partners like Accenture come in with their domain expertise. Uh, and they can work and say, all right, Q has recommended this sequence. But in our experience, we can tweak it slightly. And then comes the last part, which right now is refactoring with Blue Age, but as part of our extensibility strategy and our leadership principle of customer obsession, we want over the period of, uh, it's on the roadmap, to enable all partner solutions. Uh, so this is where Accenture's Code Genie will be plugged in as part of our QTM. There are other partner solutions too, because we want the customers to have the option, uh, to have the decision-making ability to pick the tool for refactoring, replatforming uh, that fits their overall reimagined strategy. Um, so over to you, Rob. To totally agree. You know, there, um, you talked about the different phases. Okay. So um, QT, perfect for assessment because we can get the transparency that we need. Then we move to execution, and you're right, different clients and different may want different tool sets in order to actually now do the execution work. And that's where the integration is so important and the flexibility that we, in working with AWS is terrific because we can plan each journey for each client differently based on their requirements. In fact, uh, I love how Rob describes uh, each mainframe modernization and I'm going to steal it. Uh, he always my calls, snowflake comment. Uh, exactly. Yep. So each mainframe modernization is unique. There's no cookie cutter approach, uh, but along with QTM and Code Genie, uh, we get to define that snowflake. We do. Well said. I'm curious though, Rob, uh, multiple industries, of course, can leverage this powerful technology. Why telco? Why telco? So telco has some unique challenges. You know, they have legacy systems that have been around for a long time. Those legacy t systems tend to be very expensive for them to operate. And there's been a great level of angst, I don't want to say fear, it's almost fear, but angst on whether or not they can execute a modernization on those systems. Because right. they're you know, many of those, they're all about billing. You know, we they need to bill customers. And so the, the modernization, uh, there's been risk for them around the modernization. Again, now with the visibility and transparency that tools allow for us to climb into the code and help them see what's possible, they're starting. The, the ice is starting to break. On uh, and we're at, there's actually a couple of telcos doing execution right now on uh, on mainframe and and some of the key systems, legacy systems, and the possibility for savings and business enablement are dramatic. When we build the business cases together and we show what's possible, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty compelling. I'm loving this winter theme. The ice is breaking, we have snowflakes, we just want to sled down gracefully. And so Namrata, I'm, I'm curious, we, we've talked about some of the success stories, Better Together, Accenture and AWS. How have some of our recent successes in other industries, how do they parlay almost perfectly into the world of telco? Oh, there is uh, such a great fit from what we've already achieved together and what we are trying to do together on the telco world. Uh, so Rob rightly said, it's legacy. There's a risk associated with it. These are also highly complex systems. Um, at one point in my career, I was an OSS BSS consultant. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that I don't think if you ask one of the top tier telco providers here uh, to go ahead and print out a map of their OSS BSS systems, it would fit in this room. Because it's legacy, it's backward compatible, uh, and it's highly interdependent. Uh, so obviously the challenges they're facing are unique, but we've solved this in financial services. We've solved it, solved it in insurance. We've solved it in automotive. Uh, and so we're taking the learnings from there and we're applying it with the domain expertise that we bring, right, Accenture and AWS from a telco perspective uh, and really looking at these billing systems and trying to see how we can make sure that we're reducing the risk, but at the same time, our uh, telco customers are also in the forefront of innovation. We are here at 5G, but at the conference here, we're talking about 6G, right? We want to make sure that they are prepared with the new charging models, the new billing models, uh, uh, the new offerings they want to come up 
um, and offer to their customers. So this is what we are trying to solve together, starting with a very basic layer of OSS BSS, which is just the backbone of every telco service provider. But that's just the beginning, right? It doesn't end with OSS and BSS. Oh, no, it definitely goes beyond that, right? Like I mentioned, it's innovation. Today, new and um, uh, uh, more and more 5G services are being offered to us as end customers, right? Tomorrow it will be 6G, and I mean, it's, uh, so we are trying to enable them from a big picture. What yeah, do you the, say, Rob? one of the other things that telcos have a challenge with is systems integration. If you go talk with a telco, there are so many multiple systems that they have, that have to interact to, uh, to provide services to their customers. And that creates challenges for them, customer service and selling incremental uh, services. So our responsibility is to not only show them how OSS and BSS can be optimized and how they can run that in a new way, but how all these other systems that integrate can work together. So for us, it's all about showing them the vision, what's possible. So the we, art of possible. <laughs> the art of the possible through direct practical examples from other industries and beyond. That's exactly. right. And, so, and other mission critical systems. So that, that's the key. When, when we talk mainframe, it's mission critical systems. And, uh, and uh, so the criticality of those systems and the transformation that's been happening in those systems is what truly applies over to telco as well. So are those the necessary preconditions and success criteria in like the execution phase? Well. So uh, the way I think we would think about this is, um, we talked earlier about the timeline right. for execution, and it, they are long timelines. So understand, making a commitment to the modernization, understanding what that modernization roadmap is going to look like, and ultimately how costs are going to uh, going to come into the equation as we do the modernization work. That's the, it's it's the journey ultimately that the client needs to completely understand, and so uh, that's our responsibility is to help them understand what that journey is going to look like. So, yeah, and I mean, uh, Robbie, you know, as AWS, we provide the right to set of tools, the right set of services for our customers to embark on this journey. But we need our partners to work together uh, and really help our customers see that big picture vision and help them get there. And, and we do commitments to outcomes together. Mm. Right? In the right. end, what our cli the, the last piece of confidence that we give our clients is if we run the tools, we understand the landscape, we plan the journey, we can make the commitments to the outcomes that they need for the confidence that they, re they require. So in the spirit of that joint commitment, what's some practical advice that you might share with potential clients as they're embarking upon this journey for the first time? Yeah, so um, you know, uh, earlier on in the session, we talked about um, solving the whole problem. Right. And solving the whole problem is not just the modernization. They have legacy costs, that they have legacy run costs, they have legacy so hardware and software costs. And, and so um, it's planning the journey and giving confidence is all about help, helping them understand the entirety of that five year, three year, whatever that journey looks like. And all the cost elements and how the costs are gonna decrease over here and come, come into play over here and how all that comes together. Because in the end, that's the outcome we're committing to is the execution of the modernization and the business case that comes along with it. Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, the first step is the hardest. <laughs> and, and yes, this is, uh, 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 this is a long journey that we're trying to reduce. But take that first step. Let's start with that assessment um, and work with us, work with our partners like Accenture, um, and we will be together as we help you modernize, reduce that complexity, actually increase resilience of your mission critical applications, um, and of course, you know, drive better business outcomes together. So for customers, partners, and beyond who want to be that next snowflake and embark upon this transformation together, what might you recommend? Namrata talked about take the first step. Right. That is, it, it's actually an easy first step because together we can invest with the client to do the assessment, to show them what the business case looks like, to show what the roadmap looks like, to share with them the, the, um, the successes that other clients are seeing in this modernization. So. Um, if uh, there's a compelling reason to take the first step with us. I'll give you the final word. What are you looking forward to most the rest of 2025? More mainframe modernizations. <laughs> <laughs> Together.
together. Exactly. This has been such a powerful story, and I can't wait to see what both of you build throughout the rest of the year. And to learn more from industry experts just like Rob and Amrata about how customers can transform their mainframe applications using Amazon Q Transform for Mainframe, you can check out our preview today. You can visit AWS for Telecom on LinkedIn and the web. And on behalf of the entire AWS for Telecom family, thanks so much for joining us and hope you enjoy the rest of MWC.